She has been called quick-witted, tart-tongued, daring, headstrong, assertive. Take your pick. So it should come as no surprise that Aisha's life was riddled with controversy. Defying all our expectations of 7th century Arabian women, she refused to be relegated to the background and insisted on being heard. In fact, she couldn't be ignored. Just about everywhere you look in the historical accounts of early Islam, there's Aisha, front and center, even leading an army 10,000 strong into battle. She was the youngest of the wives Muhammad married after the death of his first wife, Khadija. That had been a loving, monogamous marriage of 24 years. But the multiple later marriages were essentially political. As was the custom of the time for any leader anywhere, there were means of consolidating alliances. In Aisha's case with her father, Abu Bakr, who would be the first caliph or successor to Muhammad. So just how young was she when she married Muhammad? Aisha would later claim that she was only nine. And while other accounts have her aged nine when she was betrothed, but actually married at age 12, few people cared to openly contradict Aisha. And besides, being married at nine would make her unique. And she was proud of her uniqueness. Not only the youngest, or the most spirited, or the only virgin among those late-life wives, since all the others were either widowed or divorced, most insistently, Aisha was the favorite, the one who could tease Muhammad and get away with it, except for once. Jealous of his devotion to the memory of Khadija, Aisha asked him how he could prefer, and this is in her own words, that toothless old woman whom God has replaced with a better one. It was the kind of question only a teenager would dare ask. And of course, a much older woman regret as she remembered it years later. So how ironic is it then that the outspoken Aisha should serve as the excuse, the rationale for one of the most misogynistic interpretations of the Quran? one that would force women into silence. It happened after she was falsely accused of adultery. Rumors flying around the gossip grapevine of Mecca and Medina almost as fast as they do today on the internet. She was declared innocent by a revelation of the Quran, which stated that any such accusation had to be backed up by four eyewitnesses, who of course did not exist. So far, so good. But much later, extremist scholars would twist this horribly, arguing that in the lack of four eyewitnesses, a practical impossibility, any woman who testified to having been raped was by default admitting to adultery and therefore to be punished accordingly. If Aisha could have foreseen this, she'd have been horrified she'd have been outraged, and she would have been anything but silent. This is the woman who then led an army against the fourth caliph, Ali, in what would be known as the Battle of the Camel. The camel, hers, smack in the center of the action. And even in defeat, she'd remain undaunted, uttering not so much as a whimper when she was shot in the shoulder with an arrow, or when the arrow was pulled out. But perhaps the ultimate irony was that Aisha never had any children of her own. And yet, she'd be given the title mother. Muhammad's death would leave her a young widow, and she'd remain both childless and a widow, since the Quran stated that his surviving wives could never marry again, a mandate intended to guard against undue influence. Instead, said the Quran, the widows were to be known as the mothers of the faithful. And as the youngest and the longest lived, Aisha would thus become not only the most prominent, but also the one with the most detailed memory. 
her memories would make her the leading source of hadith, the reports of the sayings and practice of Muhammad that most Muslims regard as second in importance only to the Quran itself, and that help guide Islamic ethics to this day. It seems to me that Aisha's life is so full of irony precisely because she could not be pigeonholed, could not be cast in a stereotypically feminine role. So while I may not know if I'd have liked her, I do know that as a feminist, I have to admire her. This fearless seventh century woman whom I suspect would be utterly at home in the 21st. This is Leslie Hazelton for the Emir Stein Center. This video was produced in collaboration with Alliance of Virtue. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any new videos.